Welcome to Formula Date Ideas to Spice Up Your Apps uh, with myself, Manny De La Cruz. I am an onboarding consultant here at QuickBase and been so for about two years. Uh, today, we're going to cover how to use two new date functions to track DTO time for employees and then sales a month over month. We're going to go over the old way of doing this versus the new way of doing this, creating the fields live to show you how to make those uh, appear in your applications, and then implementing those functions in use cases. So the end result will look like this. We're going to have a user selected date field that they can just type in a date for. You're going to have the date to week. So it gives you a count for what week of the year you are in. It is the first of our two functions today. And then date to month, which pulls over the name of the month you are in, as opposed to the old way, which just gave you a number. Now, for comparison purposes, if you've been building in QuickBase for some time, this may look very familiar to you. It is the old way of pulling the name of the month. As you can tell, very cumbersome. You're forced to use variables. You're forced to pull a number and then associate it to a word. Not very streamlined, not very efficient. The new way is much simpler. It is simply name of month and then the date field or just a static date you're trying to use. Much more streamlined, easier to put together, makes it easier for everyone to utilize this function. In a similar sense, the way of getting the week of the year you are in used to be very cumbersome again. You're using three, four variables. You're using math to kind of calculate what point in time you are in currently versus that a week of the year. Again, not streamlined, very cumbersome. And these are pulled from community. So these are actually the agreed upon ways that we used to have for doing this. Again, very similar to the other one here, we have week of year, a very simple one line function. You pop in your date or a date field to reference from, and it gives you what number week of the year you are in much more streamlined, much more efficient. So now we have a live demo of how to create these in your applications and use these in either sales or PTO tracking. All right. So we'll notice here on this screen, we have our user selected date. I've popped in April 5th, just as an example. So now we're gonna go into our settings here in the top left and actually create these fields together. All right, then once we're in our settings, we're gonna scroll down a bit to where it says fields, and we're gonna click new. Once we're in here, we're gonna make our two fields. So our first one will be week of year, and it's going to be a formula numeric. So the output for this is gonna be a number, and therefore the uh, type must match. So we're gonna have formula numeric. And then name of month for the next one, is going to be a text output. So we want the type to match that. So it's going to be a formula text. You can find down here. So once that's all set, you can go ahead and click add in the bottom left corner here and create these two new fields. Perfect. So now we can see them down here. We're going to go ahead and start with week of year. We'll click into this and it'll give us our formula box towards the bottom here. So we'll scroll down just a bit and get to our formula box. Once you click into here, you'll notice you get the choose fields and functions box. You can click this and then click on select a function. Now you're gonna get this list of all the functions available. We know for a fact that our function is week of year. So I'm gonna just scroll down to the W's here and we're gonna find week of year. It gives you a little blurb about how this works. We've been over it essentially, but just to point out, it does work on ISO standards where the first day of the week is Monday. And then we're gonna go ahead and hit insert. So now we get this nice little one line function week of year with our date parameter. In our case, we're gonna delete that there. We're not gonna use a static date. We're gonna use a dynamic date field. So we're gonna go ahead and go down to our choose field and functions. And I've made that one prior to this demo, which is user selected date. And there we go. So now we've popped in week of year as our function and given us a date to choose from. When that's all said and done, you can go ahead to the top right here and hit save. Perfect. So now we're back to our field selectors here. And the next one to work on is name of month. So we're going to go ahead into here and click on that. And in a very similar sense, we're going to go into our formula box down here and click in it just to make sure we can get our choose fields and functions box. We're going to open that up and hit select the function. Now we know this one is called name of month. We're going to just scroll down to our ends and we'll find that in here. Again, a very small blurb of what it does. It's just going to tell you it gives you the string or text representation of a month. 
and we're going to hit insert. Here we are. And then just like before, we're going to delete our date or our static date parameter in there. Click on choose field and functions, and then just select our user selected date. And there we have it. So now in the top right corner here, we can hit save. Give that a second to load there. And we're going to actually go to exit settings in the top left. So now we can see how these formulas look live. So as you can tell, we now have week of year and 14. So April 5th falls in the 14th week of the year. And of course, the month is April. So to exemplify these in a use case, I've got two tables set up up here to show you what these look like for practical cases. So for employees to start, we're going to click on that here just to show you guys. So here I have two employees, uh, myself and John Doe. And then we have our employee start dates, which kind of assimilate to our user selected date. Now, I've made a few things in here to kind of exemplify how to use this function. Um, the first kind of use we have here is team assignment. What we've done with this case is we've assigned the individuals or team based on what week of the year they're in. Uh, this is for if month is not specific enough, or if you just want to do it at random and select a number and then assign them division at that point. Uh, second thing to that is we have anniversary month. So this pretty much tells us when these individuals were hired. Uh, this can be used for a slew of things um, from celebrating when they were hired in little monthly parties, or if you just want to track your peak hiring periods. So if you foresee that you hired a lot of people in August, you may want to hire more recruiters or put out more campaigns. And then the PTO on the right-hand side here. So the PTO is going to track how many hours they accrue for each week of the year. Uh, this can be set at a rate of your choosing. So in this case, division A and B have separate rates they track on, which is why the hours seem a little greater for division B. And then, of course, we just have a very simple uh, kind of formula set up to calculate how much they have left based on how much they've actually used to date. And again, this is very high level. You can use these for a slew of cases. It applies to not just PTO tracking, but even locking hours at a, a job site or a project, time cards, you name it. And then very similarly, in the sales table up here, we're using this to track sales month over month. Before this function, this was very cumbersome. It was a little finicky to get, but now because we can simply extrapolate the name of the month from the actual sale date, as we're seeing here, we can create a very neat summary report, which I've made for us prior to this demo called sales by month. And then what you can see here is we now have categorized our sales by the month they were uh, completed, giving us a nice number and a nice total as well. So that is the extent of the name of month and week of your functions. I hope you've learned something today in regards to that. And thank you for watching.